It is time, everyone. I am so excited to be here today. Let me tell you a few things before we get going. Uh, learning about polymer clay beads with Ms. Mags Bunham. She will be giving us so much information and we have so many links to put in the chat box for you. Uh, and you can also put your questions in there. Uh, but welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm always excited to meet up like this. We always have a good time. We always have a really fun, creative time. So first thing I want you to um, know is write down your 25% off coupon code over at craftcast.com because there's some classes you're going to want to get. It's a good deal. You'll love them. Those are coming up. Matter of fact, let me pop start popping in or Miss, do you want to start popping in some of those links? Because let me tell you how this started. Uh, Mags did a class for us, which you'll see the link for, um, making polymer clay beads. I was going to tell you, it's overwhelming. There's like three hours of information. You can make so many different beads. So I wanted to come on today to just show people how to make some of them, show you an overall, ask any questions, uh, because, you know, it's a way for you to see all what a class is about. And you know, everyone loves that. So that's why we're here. So this is the class that we're taking a bunch of things out of and you'll love um, what's up for that. So I fell in love with them. Just when you fall in love with them in color, you fall in love with them with black and white. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, it's like, oh, but now I love black and white. And that's how my brain works. So um, I am very excited. If you don't know Mags, you will meet her right now. Uh, and she will walk us through all the things she invented and how to make all these great beads and what she's doing and all of that. And so Mags, you know, I love when you come on and show us wonderful things. So thank you for doing it again. And you know, I love coming. I know. It's great. So this class is class is crazy. We did, I did over 30 different beads and it's probably 30 plus. And at least 17 canes that doesn't count recombining them. So, um, and it, the beads don't count everything that I show you to give you inspiration either. So this class is jam-packed with stuff. Wait, we have even more to show those. Right. And it's great if you're starting out because I'm going to show you a lot of the basic steps to creating um, simple canes that you can just recombine. And even if you've been using polymer clay for a while, I'm sure there's something in there that, that you haven't seen before and that will help you um, take your clay to the next level. Oh, yeah. Inspiration for sure. Yeah. How many people we're going to be, um, Mags is going to be showing us the... Um, uh, what are they called? The hollow beads. The How many hollow people beads. know about hollow beads? Just type in the chat box there because I love this. And yeah. she's going to show you the um, material. If you see the link right there, the sand stuff, that's something yeah. you're going to want to check out of how um, she does the hollow beads. You do, you love hollow beads. Yes. Yeah. Um, you hollow beads are great. They really are. And, and these, uh, when I first started doing these, the two squiggly ones that we're looking at there with those, what I did was if you take cornstarch packing peanuts, which you don't get a whole lot of packing peanuts these days, most people no. are sending stuff with air, but if you can find them or, or you have them, um, you can wet them with water and you can give them some sort of a shape, um, let them dry. And then what I did with those is I just uh, extruded a bunch of spaghetti strings out of the extruder and just wrapped, continually wrapped it around the cornstarch peanut shape and then um, baked it. And then after it's been baked, you just soak it in water and it turns that cornstarch peanut back into that corn starchy type wet stuff and it'll all come out I'm right I all mean I, I love that and I'm looking at that someone just said you know who Karen you're so cute you know nothing <laughs> I can just see that I'm not good at Palmer clay either but what if you just did that in black and white and maybe yeah. one red one red bee oh, or yeah. something oh it I, would be so cool it would be really cool. really neat and so, then I found out about the so the sand stuff link that we gave you is from Phyllis Cahill's um her blog site. And Phyllis is an unbelievable clay artist. And 
basically a scientist, a polymer clay scientist, because she does all kinds of experiments on all kinds of stuff. If you don't know anything or if you think you know everything, go to that blog and she has a million experiments to go through. But what she found was um, it's a mixture of what do we call that stuff? Methyl cellulose, pure methyl cellulose, which is some kind of powdered, I think, book glue. And you mix that with some water and you let that sit overnight and it becomes kind of a jelly oozy thing. And then you mix it in with really fine um, craft sand, like what you would get in the floral department or the mm-hmm. bridal mm-hmm. department mm-hmm. at mm-hmm. Michael's. And you mix that stuff together and then you'll see us go through this and then you can make it into a shape and bake it or let it sit overnight. And so then you've got this harder, it's a little bit easier to shape than the um, cornstarch peanuts are. Um, and then you have this shape that you can work over. And again, once it's baked, you need, do need to have holes. That's why you see the holes and the cutouts in those two other beads um, for it to rinse out of. But you put it in water and it's going to dissolve again and it'll rinse right out. So it's really, really cool. We don't. I don't know if we have a... A scientist person on. I bet that would work with metal clay too, is what I'm thinking. Um, I'm not going to say for I, sure. But. Yeah, I would. I I might. I wouldn't say for sure. Yeah, I no. would think so, but I wouldn't say for All sure. Right. Because we'll I don't know what there. the heat would do to it. Does it? I don't know. Yeah, good point. Uh, good point. Uh, I'm, 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 All right, so we'll only play with polymer so, clay. All right, so here you're going to show us what is involved with making that bead right. No, there you can't with this reuse material. the sand. It's a okay. one-time use. So there's the methyl cellulose I got from Amazon. And this was the fine, fine glitter from the, I think this was in the bridal department for some sort of candles or something. I don't know. And then what I'm doing here. So I mixed it all together. There you, the water in that powder. And then you can see this is kind of a glumpy type of a paste. And then you mix it in with the sand in a baggie like that so that you can get it really well combined and be prepared. If you don't like messy hands, you need gloves because it's sticky and it's sandy. Okay. You'll see me messing around with trying to get it off of my hands a lot. Um, and this, I think I had let the sand sit overnight too. So I probably should have thrown in maybe a little bit more of the um, gluey mixture. But there you see me putting it into a silicone mold and I'm going to press that in and take off um, the excess and I'm pressing it down really hard so that it's really full in there. And I have two of these. So I was able to do two at a time of the same shape, which you'll see me um, combine that later to get a thicker. I mean, you could use it just like this. Um, but I wanted a, like a double. So you see I what I did okay. there was after yep. it, had, it had baked. Um, then I put the two together with a little bit of wet stuff in between and then let it bake to bake again. And then you can sand that. You can rub some off. Um, so it gives you a really nice surface to work with. Again, you do have to be a little careful because it's still going to let off a little bit of sand. So you just want to make, be careful that you don't get any of the sand where you join the clay together because okay. it might weaken the bond a little bit, but it's, it's not that hard to work with. So I'm going to cover, I've made sure that I have the pieces of clay are large enough to meet over um, in the middle and give me just a little bit of room to stretch them together. And I'm trying to do what we call a butt joint. So you're trying to get both of the where it cuts, you want to get the cut sides to come together instead of overlapping. And my favorite big knitting needle roller tool, that that comes in so handy for everything. So if you're just starting out, that's one of the things you want to add to your list of tools. So now I'm taking some um, crepe paper to give it a texture. Oh, and okay. You could use any kind of things. You could use, there's aquarium foam filter foam that people use. Um, right now I'm into using one of the old fashioned um, hair curlers that have all the velcro type ends to it. Mm-hmm. So you can use any kind of texture to put it on there. 
And I'm basically doing that because I don't want to have to do this in two steps. If I wanted that to be a really smooth um, bead underneath the decoration, then I would bake it first and then apply the decorations. Um, but I don't want to do that. I'm lazy. So, so I you put your texture on. So okay. I put the texture on so I don't have to worry about it needing to sand. And I'm going to take slices of the canes. And as you look at the stuff that's on the edge of the tile there, that's all the different kinds of canes and stuff that we worked on during the class. So and what I'm doing is... I'm, I'm, let me I'll just tell ahead. everyone one thing quick. Um, someone wrote in, you will get all the links. There's a follow-up email with all mm -hmm. those links on the yeah. class links and everything. Yeah. So you don't panic. You'll yeah, get everything. Don't. You'll get it all. <clears throat> and so I was just kind of warming it. The, I hadn't used the cane for a while. So I was just kind of warming up the slices um, in between my fingers so that when I went to go put it over the edge there, it wouldn't crack or anything. Mm -hmm. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my where I want my hole to be. And I'm putting both of those um, places on that. And then now I'm going to just take a, a slice and set that in the middle and try to match it in the back, but probably won't. But I'll get close. And then what we're going to do is we'll put we'll cut out a hole there so that you will have some place bigger for the sand to come out of instead of just the, um, the holes where the beading wire would go through. Somebody just said, Oh, Paula just asked how heavy is this? It's nothing, right? It's, it's nothing. Nothing. It's I mean, nothing. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's light. You won't even feel it on because the even sand when, out. Even, yeah. And even when it, polymer is completely solid a solid bead it's still not that heavy it's very light yeah that one is so fun i love that one i found that one in a little stash the other day i think i'm gonna have to do like a tassel necklace with that or something there it is yeah and that gets covered completely in full with everything in the class we just wanted to yeah. we wanted to We're focus today on little... little bits of like making the hollow we thought was a great thing to show everyone because yeah. it has so much potential to it definitely so, Look at that in the texture. Very pretty. All right. So now you're going to show us. So let's stop for a second here. So what we're what I'm showing you here is I'm going to show you how you can take a scrap piece of clay <clears throat> and cover it with your cane slices and get everything to match up. So I've rolled out um, a piece of scrap, which is basically the same color of the cane because I that's what I was using was that color, those colors of scrap. And so what I want to do is I want to make sure that the slice is big enough so that from point to point, it goes to about half the circumference of the, of the bead. So you need to plan that out just a little bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take two of those and put them together and you'll see how you get a seamless join. So roll okay. on. We like seeing a seamless join. Hold on. It seems to be stuck. It's stuck. That's weird. There. Uh, nope. Nope. Wait, let's nope. go to here. And now let's see if it'll go right to it. You know, technical, always okay. something technical. Always Here we something. go. There we go. So I've measured out those two pieces, those two squares, and I know that they're going to, um, they're going to no, fit wait. around. There, there we, we go. go. So now what you're basically doing is you're, you're putting the triangle of one into the triangle of the other. And now I'm going in with a tool and I'm pressing down on the scrap so that I can pull the edges of the cane slices together and you're not seeing the end of, of the canes piece. of each piece and then roll it together and you get a nice seamless bead that's great and i'm going to add bead caps because i really think bead caps take beads to a whole different level <clears throat> I've already put the hole in for this, the stringing hole in. And now I'm, what I do is I put that on the beading needle in the middle and then line it up. And then that way, you know, it's sitting right where it needs to sit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there you go. Yeah. I love that. And that was a parquet cane that we teach. I, it was actually the end. So that's why you see some of the swirly pieces, but. I love that it was scrap and came out that great. Yeah, I know, right? 
No, that's that's very inspiring. Okay. And it again, the full class goes into everything. Yeah. Great way to watch the classes is to watch, pause, make, move forward. Yeah. And you really need to do that on this one because I did a lot of stuff at yeah. high speed. Yeah. So you need to slow it down and, yep. and take yep. it bit by bit. Yep. Okay, coming up okay. next, I forget, what are you showing us next? Oh, so now what we're doing is we're going to take a square, another way to do a square cane. So I've taken a piece of scrap and I've taken my cane slices off of this spiral. And I'm going to put a square of it on each end of the scrap. Trying to make sure they're all swirling the same way. And then you're basically going to do the same thing. You're going to go in, press the scrap down so that you can pull up the edges so that they butt up against each other and don't overlap. Roll them in. Get rid of the seams and then roll it up in your hand. And now the design is going to be perfectly placed around the round bead. I got to tell you, that is amazing how that finishes. Hiding the seams and doing that takes know, it to right? another level too. It yeah. does. Yeah. It's, that's yeah. a, I think that's a great skill. Anyone who just was starting, that's a great skill. That's to make a great beat. way to yeah. start. Yes. Yeah. Because From it's really a, hard to try when you're first starting out to try and make sure that everything is going to measure up perfectly and you've got everything centered. Because yeah. when you go to roll it, it's it's bound to get distorted. So doing it that way, it can't distort. Now on this one, what we're going to do is we've taken some cane slices from a flower um, that we built in the class. Again, I'm texturing it. That That's the, um, I was talking about the aquarium filter foam. That's what I used. Oh, nice. On that one. So I'm going to get this, I'm going to get the hole done into the bead here. And then I'm going to take each of these individual ones. I've already, again, the stringing technique, get that hole in there first, and then you can do your end caps and make sure they're perfectly centered. And then we're not going to roll these in. We're going to use these as um, lifted pieces uh, of cane on the um, on the bead. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Again, if you wanted a smooth surface underneath, you would bake the bead first, sand it, and then reapply and then apply these and bake it again. But I tend to go with the texture because I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, but that's really pretty texture. It makes it very organic looking mm -hmm. in contrast to the uh, embellishments. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I'm seeing everything in black and white though. I'm having a black and white. Moment. I know the black and white, the black and white was, is really cool. I just wish we could have, it's so hard to video white. Yeah. Now yeah, this yeah. one we took um, and we used that same silicone mold that we had used before. And I made two shapes and put them together to give me this kind of teardrop for a pendant bead. And now I'm going through, I teach you how to do a leaf shape. And so we've put a piece of the flower cane on each side, and now we're using the leaf cane um, to fill in the rest of the space. And some of it is lifted up and some of it is rolled in. So there, there was texture in this when we ended up. I love so those just another leaves. kind of cool way to do um, a textured pendant bead. Yeah, really nice. Um, Robin Beth wanted to know, what are you using to roll on it? Are you, are you talking roll about the it. tool? Not really the, the, sure. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure either. There's, I use a large knitting needle yes, as the roller. That, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's that's like that a large number knitting needle. Fourteen great. knitting. I think it's a fourteen, and I get the ones that have a point on each end. I also use a smaller one as well when you need to get into tight spaces. So if you have those laying around and you can donate them to your um, polymer tools, do that. But they're pretty cheap to get at a Michael's or Joanne's, any of those places. Yeah, that works seamlessly. I love that. Yeah. 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 The leaf canes are beautiful. Yeah. Right, Tony, I love that. Now, this is a really different kind of bead. And I don't remember who it was that came up with it for the first that I first saw it the first time. I'm sorry, if I can't remember who it was. But this, we're going to take another slice of a square cane and we're going to make this cool bead that you see on the beading oh, right. um, the, needle at the bottom left. The curly one there. All right, yeah. wait, the video's acting up again. Oh, there we go. There we go. So again, I'm just kind of 
um, warming it up because it's going to, I'm going to be moving it and I don't want it to crack. And so basically what you do is you take opposite corners and you pull them into different directions towards themselves. And I'm doing this slow because if I remember correctly back many years when we did this, it seems like um, the ecru was cracking a little bit. So mm. um, I think I had leached it too much. And so I had a few issues with it cracking. So I was really taking my time to do this so that I didn't get any cracks in it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to put your needle through the middle there. And that's how you're going to string it. And these guys go together. There's so many different ways you can do it. You can have them nest into each other, or you can put seed beads in between. So they're spaced out. There's all kinds of things you can do with this. They are so friggin' yeah. fun. Yeah. There's a close up of it, right? So there's a close up of it. Yeah. You'll learn all about leaching if you don't know in the class yeah. and all yeah, those we different talk about things. That. Yeah. And how to do it. I love that one. It's, it's really, really, really fun. fun. Yeah. And that could be, you could adapt that to an earring too, if you wanted to. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. It'd make a great earring. Yeah. Yeah. No, love that. Um, great um, style. All right. So okay, now. Let's stop here for a second. Yeah. So this class has a bonus showing you all the different methods of finishing that you can do. And when we did the Q, it was either the Q&A or the Dahlia class. I can't remember which one. Someone had said, I wish you'd do a finishing right. class. And we said, well, we kind of already have it mostly done in this bonus. So I'm going to walk you through, but there's a couple of things that I've learned since then that okay. we'll share with you. But for the very basic, when you're first starting out, um, wet dry sandpaper is what you want to use. I use this cling spore because it's a very good quality and it's going to last you. So you're not having to fork over, um, a lot of money for sandpaper. But if you're just starting out, if you go to like the auto detailing part of your big box store, your favorite big box store, um, you'll see high levels of, um, wet dry sandpaper there because basically, in my repertoire, I keep from 220 up to about 2000 um, on hand to use. You, depending on how much you need to sand away is where you start. Um, most of the time you can start with 400 and go four, six, eight, and maybe a thousand and get a really nice sheen that way. Um, you may not need to do all of that, but the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to skip. So you don't want to skip from four to eight because the way sanding works is you're scratching the surface with whatever grit you start with. And then the next grit is going to scratch that surface and you got to keep on going in the, in the order of grits so that you don't, you, you're, if you skip, you're not smoothing out the sanding stuff i'm, I'm r rambling right now and i know that probably doesn't make sense no Just it's like once you learn that yeah. that it, you're what you're doing yeah. is putting in smaller and smaller scratches right right smaller so you smaller don't scratches. see them anymore yeah. so um yes and there the are a lot the sanding sponges there's a lot of there's a lot of different we're going to talk about a bunch of them right now but yes sanding sponges um, uh, there's micro mark that i don't go into here which can really get you um a, a really glossy sheen because it goes up to like, I don't know, 8,000 or something like that. There's all kinds of different stuff. Um, but you just don't, you won't, don't want, the problem with sanding sponges is unless you're buying them from, from either an auto detailer or a jewelry supplier, they're going to be too much grit. Okay. They're going to scratch away too much. And what about, um, who, Robin Beth had a good question here. What happens to the texture? Is well, the, it depends if, uh, well, so if I don't, if I don't want to sand, that's when I texture it. Got it. Because I don't want to sand. So that's when, it, but we're going to be talking about at this point, getting a nice smooth finish with some level of sheen to it, either just a buffed sheen or a high gloss. Let me mention too, in that class, there's a, PDF handout that has endless amount of resource links yes. and all kinds of stuff in there as well. Yeah. So yeah. it's all available. 
um, get it. Use your 25% off coupon code. Right. You won't regret it. I'm telling you, there's a lot of stuff in there. All right. So let's go on with sanding because we so, all need so we're to not, I'm not going into depth, depth for that one. So we're, what we're going to go to now is my new favorite. And this is Abernat or uh, Merca are two different, there's two different names associated with it. This is a dry sanding process. This is a more expensive um, sanding medium, but it's a kind of a cloth finish. So it forms around stuff really easy and it doesn't clog up. Um, but you do have to wear a mask. When you're sanding with um, something dry like this, you need to wear a mask because you're going to see all that dust that's coming off of that. You don't want to be sucking that up into your lungs. So <clears throat> I use that. And on this one in particular, I started low, like probably 180 because it had darkened. The ecru had gotten a little dark in the oven. So I was trying to get some of that off. Um, and so I'll keep on going through the stages here on this one um, to get it nice and smooth. And you can just like use a toothbrush to brush out any of the sanding stuff that gets stuck in there. And then I'm dipping it in water and drying it off um, in between the grits so I can make sure that there's, you know, that, that it's progressing well and I'm not forgetting something. Now this is hard to find in assortments. Um, the assortments that I found on Amazon started too low. So I've actually bought um, bulk um, of the sanding um, pieces and I've made up kits for you um, through my Etsy site and that'll be linked later so that you can buy them in an assortment that works for us. It goes from 280 to 600. Now I'm buffing it on denim material. So this is an easy way to just get a really soft luster to a bead. And regardless of whether it's sanded or not, you're going to get a little bit of a sheen just by doing this. Um, uh, you don't have to worry about sanding around pets or other people. It's You just don't want to be breathing it right underneath your nose. Um, so that's one way to get a little bit of a sheen. And I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the fineness of the, of the cloth, the weave or whatever. And I was trying to show that to you in there, but you can't see. But you can see that it got a little lighter. It you wasn't as dark here now as we're going in this nice one you and can close. see. Yeah. 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 I like that kind of finish. It's uh -huh. like a what, satin sheen. Not everybody wants glossy. They're not, yeah. you know, it yeah. doesn't work for everything. Yeah. No, it, that looks great in there. Let me just see if yeah. there's any... Um, you were using denim. I don't know how old it was, Robin. It Beth, doesn't make any difference. It doesn't yeah, really make Yeah, something about denim. Yeah. Um, hey, I listen, think it's I'm, just that the weave is so tight. Mm, good point. And yeah. I'm for, we have masks around from, you remember when. We I'm do, for any yes. kind, anytime we sand or something, let's put on a mask. When you buff, stuff. anytime you buff, you want to wear a, a mask because there's little bits of there's stuff. fiber and polymer coming up into your nose and you don't really want to do that. Ali, I like that you said there. I know I'm not saying your name right. Well, we're um, going to talk about that in a set. In a Tumblr, yeah. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep, yep. Yep. Um, let's just see if there's any other. Yeah, strip. Yep. Coming up, coming up soon. Yep, Here we yep. go. Uh, so there's that bead that we love. Beautiful. Okay, let's stop here. Yep. So this was the old buffing kit that I would sell. The one on the left was a muslin cotton muslin and the one on the right is um a they call it balloon cloth but it's also cotton it just doesn't it's the weave is not as opened as the muslin one is and when you're doing when you're making these yourself it need you need two of the small wheels on your mandrel to make it work for us because one is just it's too thin and it's you're not going to be happy with it got it now okay. The problem with the muslin one is, is that thing lints like crazy and forever. And I really didn't like using it that much because of it. Um, and so I, every once in a while, I'll experiment with a little something new. Um, most of the time I'm in the, if it's not break, if it's not broken, don't fix it type of thing. But on this one, I did want to try something else. And so let's go to the next slide and hold there. 
Oh, you're starting the video. Oh, I'm going to show. Okay, well, I guess I'm going right into it. So this is the balloon cloth that I'm using. And this is on that piece that we just sanded um, with the dry sanding paper. Um, Now, I put it on a needle tool like that um, to help hold it and to give me an easier way to move it around and still be able to um, not cramp my fingers up too much or get my fingers in the way. You can see Um, the shine happening already. Yeah, you can already. Now, here's the thing. You always want to use the lightest hand possible um, when you're buffing something like this. When you're using a rotary tool to buff something, it's the lightest hand possible. You don't want to dig into it. You don't want to press it down hard because Mm -hmm. what you're going to do is you're going to heat up the polymer again, and it's going to cause some gouges in there if you're not careful. So light hand, light hand, light hand. They're both pretty. All right, let's see. We have some questions. I think, Meg, um, Marilyn was asking about some of your color formulas. Didn't you put those in your bead making? Yes, they are. It's all in there. It's like a book you're going to get in there, I'm telling you. It's It's everything. Crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, Patricia wants to know what about craft felt? Well, we're going to talk about felt now. Okay. So um, I think I know what question she's answering, but let me go through this and then we'll, we'll talk about that on the other side. Okay. Let's see if our video picks up again. It might. We're lo- I am shocked how great we can see the difference between those two. Yeah, that is there. pretty. That is pretty good. Okay. Stop here. Mm-hmm. Okay. So look, look back. go ahead you talk i'll find okay it. you stop or, or if you can't okay there we go okay yep so can you hit the next one and then stop i'm gonna i'm gonna try you try <laughs> zoom is if not, not being we'll, friendly if it right doesn't now. we'll just stop and i can talk through that yeah 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 okay okay there okay Ta-da. so Did it. During the pandemic, a ton of people got into polymer clay. And so there's a ton of newbies out there who really, I I don't want to say this in a derogatory way, but many of them don't really know what they're talking about. And stuff starts to spread around that you can do this or you can do that. If you have a rotary tool, the kind of felt pad or buff that you're going to get tends to be a very hard, compact felt. You don't want to use that. The problem is the same thing that's the problem if you don't use a light hand, except for this, you can't ever use a light hand enough that it's not going to gouge, not heat up your clay and gouge. So you don't really want to use any of the tools that are made for the rotary tools that are a hard felt. That said... Rio Grande in the last couple of years has started selling this product that's a tech, it's called Technique, and it is a muzzle, it is a felt buff, but the difference is, is that it is three layers of a soft felt. So it moves. Okay, stop right there. So you can see the layers right there. One, Mm -hmm, two, three. mm -hmm. And it's much softer. It it smushes in your hand. So it's, it, it doesn't have any of the bad properties of the other kind of felt. So I, I did some testing with it to see if I thought it was going to work with polymer. And I was very happy to find, um, that it does. Now we did a whole thing on this on, I love tools in the, It was the fall 2022. So if you go there, if you want to know more about this, you can go for free to the I Love Tools and you can see my entire experiment with testing this compared to the cotton buff and all of the the different ways that I did it. But the one thing I really love about this is on on the quilt jewelry that I do, where I take a slice of the, of a cane and I just mold that in to look like a piece of fabric. It's, it's really hard to get in and to sand something like that. And I don't really need to sand it because it's a slice from a cane. It has very little finger marks on it, the way that I form it, but I can go in with this 
and do a zip, zip, zip. And it gives it a nice little buff sheen again. Very easy. Again, light hand, light hand, light hand. You barely want to touch your polymer. Right. It's for a better few to the heat. Right. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, exactly. That makes sense. And I would like to say for people who came on and said they're new to polymer, don't be afraid. Don't feel like, oh my gosh, I can't do all of this. Just start. Take yeah. that get that class and make that, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think that's, the, I think you're absolutely right. I yeah. think that's the best way to do it. And just, uh, we start simple in the class. Right. And then it moves on and becomes more complex. Right. Yeah. So just do what you feel comfortable doing exactly. for that day, whatever, you know, maybe yeah. it's only two beads or one yeah, yeah. technique. I yeah. mean, you're really gonna. It'll get you hooked, but you yeah. know, and I'm speaking from Mags knows experience because I am not good in this. So I would make those cute little hollow beads and black and white with a red and be very happy. And you would that. be very, so very happy. Very happy. Very, All right. Very, so very let's good. go on here. We're going to see some now. Now we're going to see Mads's this in trial. Action. Yeah. And, and the different looks. And I think this is real time. So those are both it's that happened to be Fimo Pro. I took about five different kinds of different clay and I just cut squares and baked them. So this is just baked. It hasn't been sanded. It's straight out of the oven pretty much other than I let it cool down. And again, you can see um, it's, I don't know if you can see that it's a really light touch, but it is a really light touch. You just want to keep it moving. You don't want to let it stop and spin in any one space unless you intentionally want to change the shape. Like if I wanted to curl those corners more, I could put a little bit more pressure on it because that's what I want to do. I do want to remove some of the clay. But if I'm just doing it for a sheen, it's move, 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 light hand, light hand, light hand. Well, I know it, sometimes we don't want to do samples, but it's worth trying a little sample. It don't really start is. on your finished piece. I know. Now look yeah. at that. Look how that is already. That is like shiny. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you smushed all your fingerprints in there and everything, then you probably would have to sand a little bit. But if it's just a nice, fairly clean surface, this is all you need to do. And I think you can even get a handheld Dremel inexpensive to start with these things, too. Oh, yeah. Have, yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't, have, don't to have to go. You don't have to get a Ford them. That's for sure. Yeah. Oh, look at that. That looks great. Look at that. It's, yep. I mean, that's unbelievable. So let's stop here. So this was the kit that we did for the I Love Tools. So this okay. gives you two sheets each of the Merca from 280 to 600. It gives you two of the felt buffs, one of the cotton buff, and then we're going to talk about the 3M disc in a second. And those are already mounted um, with the number of them that you need. Um, and so that's ready to go. So that's a craft cast kit that's available on the Etsy store, which you'll find the link to. But they're I just also put the link in there too get, for that. Yeah. And then they're also in, uh, available individually. So if you don't want to get the sandpaper and you want to get the other two items, you can. If you just want to get the felt buffs, you can. It's there's there's choices. So you don't have to get the whole kit if you already have some of it. If you need the whole kit, there it is right there for you. And you and get a little me, thingy with it talks about some of my finishing tips. Let me just <laughs> take, because this is a good question to take care of. Who just wrote that? Can you, oh, uh, someone just said about the um, the wheels that look like the one, the what Starburst, Robin. That's Beth. the yeah. 3M. That's yep. the 3M. That's them right there. About, so Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and let's see what else. That is what you're talking about. Yep. Um, thank you, Brenda. I'm glad you learned a lot. I don't think, do you ship to the UK? I, I don't normally. But what I will do, Susan, is um, if you will um, send me a message through Etsy, I'll open it up for a little bit for you to um, place your order. And then I'll probably close it back up. So if anybody's watching this at another point in time that's from the UK, do the same thing. Just message me through Etsy and I'll open it up for you. And I will say the reason that I don't right now is it's very difficult to track goods once they get into the Royal Mail system. And it is, had, that's true. It's yeah. horrible. And I had such a hard time during COVID of stuff either getting lost or not getting to the people in time. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. so I don't tend to do that unless you really understand that once it leaves the U.S., I can't help you. 
Yeah. I can't help Good you point. find it. I can't help get it to you. Yep. It's out of my hands once at least. It might have gotten better since pandemic. It may started. have, although may I'm, have. Not, uh, I'm not sure that it has. What about Canada? Canada, I do that. I, I okay. think it's already open for Canada. But again, I can't help you once it gets into the Canadian mail system. Susan said she does usually get stuff. All right. So good to know. We want to know that. Um, We will put in, and everyone who's worrying about the links, um, Misty, you can drop them in one more time. You'll get a follow-up email. Just make sure you look around with the link for today Mm -hmm. as well as um, everything. So uh, no worries. Um, You want to just tell everyone, Patricia's was asking about the color wheels. Okay. So if we go on it, I think we go into that next. I know they're very attractive. So 3M has bought this company called uh, Dedico, I think is the name of it. Um, And so there are lesser priced radial discs out there. And in fact, Rio, I just noticed the other day when I was ordering some stuff that Rio actually carries both the 3M and the Dedico. There is a little bit of a difference in the price. The Dedico is cheaper. Um, You know, you get what you pay for. I'm guessing I have not tried them yet. I don't know that I will try them. Um, they are, they're out there available on Amazon now. Cause I guess 3M lost their time period of being able to have everything exclusive or whatever. I've been using these for years. I love them. I stack uh, four to five of them on a mandrel um, so that you get a lot of coverage. And again, it's something you're going to want to use a very light hand with. You're going to want to start low and work your way up. You don't have to go all the way through all four of them. Um, you may want to stop at the at the pink. It really depends on what you want to do. Um, and it, they work very well for me. I have a lot of issues with um, chronic pain. And for me to sit and sand a bunch of stuff, a bunch of beads is really hard to do. So these come in very, they very great. Um, convenient. Okay, so we can- We use them on, on metal. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, it's are used on metal. It's a great way to sand. So I'm trying to point out here that you could still see some little places where I'd added the cane on top of the plain bead, but you can't really see it. I don't know what I think, what I thought I was doing. So here I'm starting with the blue, um, which is about a 400 grit. Um, And I'm very lightly, continually moving all over the bead to sand it. Um, You don't, Again, you don't want to use a hard hand and you don't want to sit on a spot and let it rotate there unless you specifically want to get rid of some clay. Um, so you have to be very careful about that. So then we go to the the pink, which they call a pumice, which I think is more around a six to 800 grit. I've never really gotten a decent answer on a specific number. And then the peach is a little bit more up there. <clears throat> A lot of times I can stop just with the pink and then buff it with the cotton buffs or the felt buffs and get just as much of a shine. But you're going to see how this one little bead with those four mandrels of disc shines up like crazy, even before you buff it. And then when you buff it, it looks like glass. So this is the cotton buff. And typically, one thing I didn't mention earlier, typically that first sanding grit that you use, whether it's wet sanding or dry sanding or with the 3M disc, that's the one that's going to take the most time. Once you've gotten everything looking fairly good with that, then the sh- the next grits are really just kind of one pass over the surface type thing to um, to get them shiny so you don't have to work quite as long look at that shine that yeah. is unbelievable you know i love the map the satin finish but then you look at the shine mm-hmm. and go oh that's nice too yeah, it's hard yeah. it, that yeah. really shows how great that shines yeah. and who was i saying ali i think you were mentioning about you use those instead of rouge or tripoli with metal yeah because it is mm-hmm. cleaner um, it's much cleaner yeah yeah it, it is. And you don't have to go buy a whole Dremel. You can just put no. them on the end of um, one of the portable ones. So Absolutely. yeah, it's a fabulous look. Um, and beginners, 
don't freak out. These are more yeah. things you can get build into in the future. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, all right. I think you're going to take us through one more way. We're going to talk about the Tumblr again. So okay. if you hold on this for a second, mm -hmm. I think we have a long pause on this, but hold mm -hmm. it anyway. So many years ago, again, chronic pain issues, and I was doing a lot of beads. I really, it was really wrecking my hands. And so this is a cheapo Chicago electric rock tumbler from Harbor Freight. And uh, I think it was Desiree McCory who first talked about using these to sand beads many, many moons ago. And she used cut up pieces of wet, dry sandpaper. Um, and I used that technique. It worked really well for me. In fact, I went to the, to the trouble of gluing sheets of sandpaper back to back so that both surfaces would sand. Hold right here, please. Mm -hmm. um, and this really became a way when I was really in a lot of production with, with B type stuff, this really saved me. But there is an issue with these Harbor Freight um, rock tumblers. And that is that that black rubber and polymer clay, for some reason, react to each other and it will discolor your clay. Okay. So why I'm showing you this yogurt cup is not to show you that I only eat a hundred calories of yogurt. <laughs> it's because I need something to line the inside of that um, tumbler. tumbler. So basically oh. what I would do is take a big yogurt or sour cream or something like that. And I would find one that was, you know, would go all the way down in it. You might have to go in and clip like um, cuts down the side to get it to fit in there. And that's okay because you're, it's the thing is, is you want to line it so that the um, beads can't touch the black rubber and you're going to need to use your lid to do the same thing because the lid has the back black rubber on it as well. So you're putting them all in a plastic like that. Do you put holes in the bottom or anything to make sure no. the water goes through? No, because no, the water's going to go. You want the water inside of that. You don't okay. want the water outside of that. You're going to put that into the tumbler. Okay. And then we're going to talk about whether you're using the sandpaper or the plastic median. Now, for years, I used the sandpaper, but it's messy and, and you're not really sure when, when you need to change it. So I found the plastic media that other jewelers use for other stuff. And this works very well as well. So you start with the blue, which is the medium. The green is the fine and the tan is the extra fine. So it's three steps, basically. I would let it run just because if I'm not in a rush, just because it's easier to do, I'll put it in one grit, let it run for the day and then put change it, put in the next grit, let it run overnight undo it, put in the final grit and run it for the next day. It doesn't make it any smoother. It's just that it's easier to do. Don't worry about that. I'm going to, oh my God, I'm going to sand it too much. You can't. I tested that years ago. You can't sand them too much. It's not the same kind of sanding that you're doing when you're doing by hand. So would it make sense to get three yogurt cups and keep them in your tumbling material and have them all set that um, way. It doesn't really save you any because you have to drain it anyway. Okay. You're going to have to drain, you know, you're going to put it through a colander to get the, Got the water okay. and the sanded off stuff. And then you're going to start with fresh, fresh again and fresh water. Again. Okay. Let's take a few questions. Okay. You have a, Oh, Julie has a lower tone. I would need to uh, line it too, or just use Harbor. Freight. I, I have not. I have not tried it with the lower tone, so I don't know. Make up a few beads that you're Give willing to sacrifice and see if it works. And hi, is Darren. It Darren. Yeah, it is a little noisy. They are noisy. That's, they are a little that's noisy. That's why I yeah. do it overnight when I'm not down here. And Darren wants to know, do you glue the plastic yogurt tub and lid nope. into the black tub? No, 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 no. You're just going to use it to line it when you're using it. Oh, Susan, that's a good question, too. You can put several in there at once, right, Mags? What? Um, when you're beads? polishing. Yeah. Oh, you're going to see. What, you're going to see. Yeah, okay. how, yes, you get a lot of beads in there. Oh, so, Abby said, Laura, hey, definitely oh, yeah. can create blackening issues. Oh, well, there you go. So here's the answer. Yogurt cups. Yep. There you go. The answer another, to everything is yogurt cups. <laughs> another genius <laughs> aha moment. We love we love that Mags has figured this all out for us. We don't want black on our beads. So we there you not. go. It, and uh, it's not even black. It almost, it's a weird color. It's not, yeah, it's not pretty. Well, I think, yeah, when you do silver in there, 
we go through the same thing and you want mm-hmm. to get rid of any black scuffing. residue that's left yes, there and, and clean it off and all that scuffing. and scuffing. Yeah. Scuffing. yeah. And yeah. we do love, um, Harbor Freight. So to know that you can adapt one of their yeah. tools is a great thing. We appreciate that. Yeah. All right. So now I'm just moving on to our, our video is a little funky today, yeah. but we'll get it to work. Let's take some other questions while it's doing it. Because does has, has anyone else tried this um, material yet for polishing? And did it work for you? We'd love to know if anyone else has had experience. Again, this is not going to give you a bright, bright polish. This is going to give you more like what the denim was. Ah, um, okay. Okay. Now this looks like it's two grits mixed together. It's not. It's a Harbor Freight group that I did before. So basically what I do is like I throw a handful of grit in. I throw in a handful of beads. I throw in a handful of grit. I throw in a handful of beads. I top it off with a little bit of grit. And then you fill it up with water. And the next photo I think is going to show that I leave a little bit of space at the top for the, between the grit and the top and between the water and the top. So you want it to move around. So it needs a little bit of space, but you don't want it to have a lot of space because then the plastic media won't be touching the beads all the time. Got it. Okay. So you want it to touch. Yeah, right. that's similar. Now, I guess you don't use, when we use silver in tumblers, we put in an agent that yeah. helps, you know, I don't. we don't use that. Okay. At one, when I was using the sandpaper, and if you're going to use the sandpaper, which you can still do, I mean, that's that's an easy way to get started because this plastic media is not cheap okay. and you do have to buy a lot of it. Okay. Um, if you want to just try it with the sandpaper first, I would always add a couple of drops of glycerin to it so that it would keep this the paper moving around. Ah, got it. Because otherwise it wants to kind of all glump together. So if you put some glycerin in there, then that will help move it around a little bit. So see, there's a little bit of space. There's a little bit more water and there's a little bit of space. And that seems to be the happy medium. Yep. And then you're going to put your, you're going to have to cut out your top of your yogurt to fit in there. Yeah. And then you put in your lid that has the rubber on it and then all the other stuff and you put it in there and let it go. That looks like the yogurt fit fairly well in there. It it the ridge needed to be, you know, the edge of it needed to be cut off. Cut off a little bit. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's when I saw perfect. you did this JPEG, I was like, I don't know what she's doing, but there's yogurt oh, involved. Yeah. Now I know there's there was no involved. yogurt. It was just no the yogurt, yogurt lid. No, um no yogurt. Uh and there we go. Even the Stony Field brand. Remember that mm-hmm. it's the right size. Okay. So, so here's, here's what denim. we were talking about earlier. Cut up a bunch of old denim, throw it in there. I did the same thing that I do with the, with the grit, a handful of denim, a handful of beads, a handful of denim, a handful of beads, a handful of denim. And this, you're not going to put any water in or anything like that. This one, the longer you run it, it does seem to get a little bit more sheen to it. Um, so if you're going to leave it long, I would do it on this stage. If you really want something glossy, glossy, what you could do is after you've done all of this, then you could take it to your rotary tool and use either that felt buff or the cotton buff and get onto the bead more specifically to raise the shine up a little bit. So you can do this as part of the process and then finish again by hand. I've done that as well on pieces that I've really wanted to be shiny. Gorgeous. Um, so Ram said, Ram Beth said, do you secure that top with the yogurt? I guess you what tape it to make sure. It's uh, no, on no, no, no. It just sits. You want to, It's there's a little ledge in there where the um, the piece that is the lid of the tumbler fits into so it just sits in between that piece and that lid that gets jammed in there and then you put the metal lid on top of that and then the screwy thing right so you don't have to worry about the top is secure by finishing off the closure of the whole tumbler there so yes yes oh and then you have it's very exciting now let me say something you have metal beads in there i didn't Mm -hmm. pull out i didn't pull out that you forgot link. to pull out. Barbara's. I did. Misty, can you pull out Barbara Becker Simon's link for her class? Because that particular piece has um, another class that we did that's yes. also chock full. I think it's actually two classes, Allison. I think I think there is two classes. Two. There is one and two. Yeah. yeah. 
and it's wire bead wrapping. So all that wire work in there was all from Barbara's class. I just went crazy. And I love the Calder beads that she made yeah. that you oh, can man. see in there. Well, I she love them did. too. It yeah. was a great class. Great class. Great class Lots is. of yeah. yeah. Love, love, love that wire work. So check that out. Um, and we'll try to, if it's, if, if Misty can't find it, I bet she does. We'll put it in the email. Uh, yeah. Cause it's just a great um, accessory to this. Plus just get copper wire or the colored wire. Oh, and it yeah. looks fabulous. This is yeah. all just, you know, cheapo craft colored wire that I yeah. used. And it was just, it was too fun. Thank you, Misty. She put it right there in, Yay, in there for beautiful. everyone. Um, yeah, it's like a beautiful garland even. It's really, really And beautiful. what I did with that is actually three pieces. So one was a bracelet. Then there was a necklace that's the smaller beads. And then there's a necklace that's the big beads. And you can combine those any way you want to create whatever length you want or yeah, it's so fun. Do it. it was a lot of fun. And Love you can those. see some of the other, I don't necessarily show you how to do all of those beads, but most of them, and they certainly will give you inspiration from to the carry other, on, yeah, to yeah. carry on from the other beads. Yeah. And we went, the one, another bonus is showing how to use up your, the scrap ends of your, not the scrap end, but the ends of your canes to create veneers. We have a whole bonus on using scrap to create, um, veneers to use on beads there is a ton of info in that we, class too bad we can't all be in the room and have a palmer clay party in real life right now because we would that all would be, be nice <laughs> that would be fun but norway's on the line and the uk is on I the know. line and canada's on the line. it's so exciting um you'd be in right ramen all right so there's the class you'll see it when you go um the link and you'll save the 25 yeah. percent. get it treat yourself just treat yourself to that and to barbara's class as well um there it's more fun 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 um oh so now wait i have to say this too so i put this in because well i sort of made max come up with figuring out how to make dahlia flowers because they're my absolute favorite she did so I just get this class too this we is did so a, there's much a fun. freebie there's the teaser of this one on the youtube Channel. There is. That's right. There's and the reason we yep. were putting this up was if anybody had um, watched that teaser and got that class and wanted the templates that I Correct. sold out of, I have my la I'm at my laser yeah. again and da da, you get, you can get that's for doing the box. That's the basic Dahlia with the extras for the box. And then if you buy the craft cast kit, you get two more flower templates and for two different kinds of flowers here's the truth because we always like to make sure you don't have to buy anything to do the class but so the the pattern is in the handout in yes that one. all the patterns that, and, that and the, being the said, basic ones the other two are as well yeah but that being said it's really fun to have the templates already done for you just saying so yeah. they're there yes. um and i've made some of those flowers actually using those templates in ceramic clay it worked great for that too uh, it was just um, done for me, and I I loved it. Yeah. yeah. But look so how that's pretty a little those are. different petals, and there's two different ways. We sh I show you the different ways to add shape to it in different spots, so that you yeah. get different looking flowers, even using the same templates. Yep. They're all kind of based on a dahlia, but they can go different ways. This and is the neotype. We turned them in. Max turned them into magnets. Mm -hmm. Actually, so you sent me a bunch that I photographed. They looked at, adorable on a refrigerator. I also yep. turned it into a napkin ring um, yep. that looked great. Looks um, yeah. And then um, also just on a um, denim shirt with the magnet. Great. Mm -hmm. Love them. They look real. People think that they're real. <gasps> we made it to the end. <laughs> we did. Wait, do we have any <laughs> other um, questions, everyone? I know. Isn't that yellow flower? I'm telling you. Let's see if I can just back up that little bit. I mean, I freaking love those dahlia flowers too. Worth trying and adding I the magnets. Told, I sent um, Allison a picture um, several weeks ago because we just purchased a home in Asheville. And the day that I got there for closing in the garden were blooming dahlias, just like the dahlia flowers there. So yeah, I, I'm obsessed with of, the dahlias. Yeah, oh, the you dahlia. can see, I'm, I'm can right see, there with you. I You can see the, in the little picture below it, um, mm -hmm. turn them into the napkin rings. It was fun. Yeah. It's just fun and the great gifts and all of that. Um, 
let's see, let's take some few questions before we finish up just in time. Julie wants to know when baking in a convection oven, do you reduce the temperature? Um, if you're baking in a full size oven, do you only use the center rack? Okay, so for baking, you, you must do two things. You must buy two oven thermometers. Right. And That's not really cheapos. important. We've learned. Don't mm -hmm. buy them at the dollar store. Buy them at some place that has a little bit better quality stuff. And then you have to calibrate your oven. So what you really need to do is you need to stick the two um, oven thermometers inside your oven, turn it to the temperature that you think you want to be at, and then let it heat up for like 20 minutes. And then every 10 minutes, go back and check what the temperature is and write it down. And you want to do that for two reasons. Number one, almost every oven, almost every oven, never is the temperature that you have it on, on the dial. Because the way they work is they go high, they shut off, then it comes down low, then it goes back up and goes back down. So you want to make sure that that spike isn't going over the basically for most clays over 300,000. Kato's a little different because you can up 300,000, 300 degrees. Kato's a little different because you can go a little hotter on that, but you don't want it to go into that burning stage for too long a period of time. And you don't want it to be below the baking stage too long of a period of time. If it's like five minutes, that's okay. But if we're talking 10 or 15, then it's going to cause some differences in how your stuff is going to um, cook. You want it as far away from the um, elements as possible. So yes, the center rack would be good. No, you don't use a PMC kiln. No, 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 no. Too hot, too hot. Um, what I tend to do is I have my own um, convection oven down here for the um, studio. And I have a ceramic tile that you buy at any of the home stores, just like a six inch tile. And I stick it in the bottom pan, um, like in the bottom of it. And that helps keep the temperature a little bit more regulated. Consistent. Mm -hmm. consistent. Um, and then I also tint it with a piece of foil. So I just, it doesn't have to be attached if you have your own polymer clay oven. If you are doing this in your own kitchen oven and you can, um, I two suggestions. One, hit the flea markets or the yard sales and find like an old Dutch oven or, or a turkey roaster or something that has a lid that you can devote to your polymer clay. And then all you have to do is put it in that um, to bake your goods. And I would I would maybe put another five or 10 minutes onto the time because you that's got to heat up as well before it starts uh, putting point. the good heat point. out to the clay. Um, or if you really just are really starting new and you don't know if you're going to like this or not, get two of the, you know, the, the aluminum foil lasagna pans from the grocery yep. store and a couple of clips, put your, put your clay into the metal pan, Put the other one on top of it, clip it clip together, together and use it in your Perfect. oven. It is perfectly Perfect. safe to use in your own oven, but you can't use it. In, yes. Like the old enamel roasters. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Absolutely. Let's take two more <laughs> questions here because you guys are so good with questions. Um, at, now, Vicki want to know a perfect temperature. Doesn't it depend on which it clay you're using? On, it depends you got to read the, your clay. It, you really yeah. got to read your clay. But I will tell you after doing this for 20 something years, um, I pretty much, my temperature is between 285 to 290, 99% of the time. And even for clays, like Cernet has a lower baking temperature, but I've baked it around with my Primo temperatures and I've never seen an issue. Cato is a little higher and you can go a little higher still with Cato than what's on the package. But for the most part, I found in my life that 285 to 290 seems to be the perfect temperature. Yes, yeah, so Robin Bessage Scoby says 275. Yeah, it does. read your read your label. That's what's important. Yes. Um, all right, let me take one more question here. Naomi wanted to know a vibrator tumbler. Any difference? Can't tell you. Haven't tried one. There you go. I would um, think is a vibrator the 
do they use a magnetic thing? Do you have to have steel shot to make it work? Then it I wouldn't work. Uh, although I don't know. I've never tried steel shot to try and buff them up. Maybe that works. I know some people have used like the r- river rock pebbles that you get oh, yeah. in the yeah, floral yeah. department. Yeah, I've yeah. never tried that either. That could yeah. be something else to try. Yeah. I mean, it is, it's fun to try a little something because you never know then what you come up with. And we like that. That's why yes. we have Mags here who tries things for us and tells us what to do and what not to do. How long? I don't bake anything less than 45 minutes. There you go. Uh, the package says 15 minutes for every quarter inch or something like that. I never bake anything less than 45 minutes unless oh. I know I'm going to be baking it again longer later. So if I just need to get it to start to set up, then maybe I'll do it for 25 minutes, but only if I know that I'm going to be doing it 45 minutes later. Okay. Um, oh, Brenda just said oh. steel shot is stainless and go. not works in a magnetic tumbler. Thank well, you very you much. Um, you, oh, Robin Beth has <gasps> used clear nail polish for the shine. Now she'll stop using that. Well, now you have other ideas. That's why we yeah. do these. Yeah, that's exactly why we do this. We love everyone who showed, sent us pictures. Um, uh, so that we can post them, post them on the Craftcast, uh, Facebook, Instagram, tag us. It makes us all very happy yes, to it does. have all of that. And if you um, have questions later, don't, I mean, either email get, get us, it yep. Crafts, yep. Craftcast email us. or to me, I don't know if there's a link in there directly to me, but just Allison give it to always gets it to me. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Support she a podcast. We'll get it. Don't worry. I do. We'll talk often. There we go. Misty, <laughs> just put it in there. There you go. Uh, yeah. Anything that comes up and, so you guys like this kind of event I'm taking, I'm, I'm guessing free, talk about the class, see more, yeah. learn a little bit more. Right. I know they're yeah. great. I, I think this is, a, this, Allison this. came up with this and I thought it's a great idea to yeah. get us because we tend to forget what we've done, what we've yeah. taught already. Yeah. And it's kind of like it's done and then it's done, but we need yeah. to go back because there's some fabulous classes. We have so many fabulous there. classes. Yeah. So that's yeah. what we're doing that. I'm so glad you all love it. Um, yeah. Because then you're like, no, I want to, I want to get that video. Yeah. I want to take yeah. a look at it. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Thank I you, think it you, is very you. useful. All right, everyone. We will have more of these coming up. We have a lineup of new classes coming in the fall that they're all very exciting projects. You're going to love everything. Thank you, everyone, for, um, enjoying today's event we love seeing everyone we love knowing everyone's on around the world so it's the best keep in touch use your coupon code anything is weird or doesn't work um yeah and if there's something you want to learn how to do oh yeah let us know let us know and i normally it's allison tells me hey do you think you could do this and yeah i'm not sure and i go and i dig into it and i find out that i can and then that's how class ends up I will just give you a little bit of a heads up. One of the things that Max has coming up, here's the coupon code again, everyone um, at craftcast.com is a, um, it's, it's amazing. It's <laughs> doing flowers. I know she's laughing out of um, a, a crepe paper um, that are, you will just flip out. And she does a beautiful frame around it. I was speechless when I saw it is all I'm saying. So um, can the coupon be used? Yep. You can use it for everything at Craftcast. Just go ahead and use it. Laura, it's good that you registered. You'll get the email with all the follow-up information and a link to the video. This video goes up over on the YouTube channel, our free stuff. We put a lot of it over there. We forgot the giveaway giveaway. Yeah, That's right. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Tanya, for reminding me. Um, All right. Let me... I'm going to ask, hold on a second. You're, I'm spinning and Miss Mags, you're going to tell me when to stop. Stop. Okay. Karen Brack, you just won a class. Yay, oh, there Karen. you are right there. Karen, is, that's who just put it in. <laughs> <laughs> so Karen, you won. Um, right. Support at craftcast.com. Do you have Mags's class already? Yeah, everyone's going to be perfect. Oh, so you just won Mags's class. Just contact support com and Misty will set you up with it in your library. Thank you for reminding me about the giveaway. Yeah. Um, Because we love giveaways too. So everyone, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, it's a joy. And show thank us you, what yes. you make. And thank you, Miss Mags, for um, teaching us so many different things to learn. Love to share. Thank you, honey. <laughs>